Hi, I'm Nan Simonson. I am um, grinding my flax chia combo and I thought I'd share that with you and explain why I even do it. I'm a health coach uh, with a lifestyle medical practice and the College of Lifestyle Medicine um, promotes and recommends, as does the World Health Organization and most organizations that are looking at maintaining wellness, reversing chronic diseases will recommend a, if not plant exclusive, a plant centered, or at least a heavily plant based diet. And I, for four years now, have been whole food plant based along with my husband. And we eat nothing but plant foods, stronger and healthier than ever. And I use the chia seeds, flax seeds, and some other foods that I'll explain to you um, the value of um, to maintain a good solid level of omega-3 fatty acids. We don't make two essential fatty acids, omega-3 and omega-6. And six is abundant. It's in plants, it's in animals, it's in all oils, and we eat massive amounts of oil in this country. And so omega-6s are out of balance with threes. We have enzymes that break them both down and the sixes tend to be broken down preferentially over the threes, which isn't good because that is inflammatory, whereas the threes are actually anti-inflammatory. So we want lots of threes. We want at least a good ratio, one to one, maybe one to three, one, three, two, three sixes, maybe if we're gonna stretch it one to four, but in the American diet, it tends to swing so far over that the average American has a one to 15, one to 20, one to 30 ratio of sixes, highly, highly inflammatory maybe. That's why we are getting so sick as a country in terms of chronic disease. So why am I explaining all of that? Because it helps me explain why I want to have a flaxseed mixture to put on my food. What food do I put it on? Well, I have oats every morning. I do savory oats now. You can do oatmeal, you can do oat groats. Well, every morning I have oat groats and I have them in a savory mixture. And I did a video on the Be a Plant-Based Woman Warrior cookbook that I got and Anne Esselstyn, and and Jane Esselstyn wrote the book. It's a New York bestseller. It's a cookbook, and they and just raved about her savory oats. I loved her savory oats from the cookbook, and that's what I'm doing now. But whether it's savory oats, sweet oats, any kind of a grain cereal, um, a lot of recipes will call for flaxseed. If you don't grind it, it goes right on through you. Flax isn't. We're not advised to grind flax, but why not? It's a tiny little seed and it's not going to be as well assimilated if it's not ground, even though a lot of people do flax puddings and I don't mean flax, chia puddings. Um, this is what they look like. This one is flax seed. This one's a golden flax. You can get a brown flax. And this one is the chia seed. This is the dark chia. You can get a white chia. It's much more expensive, but you can make a really light pudding that way if you're making like a coconut chia pudding. Well, I grind the two together in a little more than a two to one, two flax to one chia ratio. And I wanted to show you that. Um, simple, simple stuff, but I might as well put this in since you've already seen it. And I'm going to put in these are my Tupperware containers already labeled flax. And I buy my flax bulk from the health food stores. And I always get organic. I get organic every chance I get. Um, if you can't get organic because of convenience or price, get whatever you can. But I, I do prefer organic. So I'm going to start with Eh, I think I'll use just a little bit more. We go through this pretty quickly because every day I have two tablespoons at least of this mixture. And I'll explain to you a little bit more about the my choice and why and 
um, share with you something that you can maybe use. Um, so I'm just eyeballing this. If that's a one ratio for flaps, this is almost a one to one. I'm gonna save a little chia because I can use it for something and then I've got to go out and get some more chia. I've got some more flax, so I'm fine. All right, and it's as simple when I'm doing this, and this is a Vitamix, turn it on, and I grind it and watch what happens. <laughs> which is a good thing. I don't shun fat, but I do shun oils because they are so high in omega-6s that they offset the omega-3. It's easy to get sixes, much harder to get threes if you are vegan because the threes you can find a lot in fish, but I don't even eat fish. The oceans are polluted. They're full of, full of microplastics. I consider fish a sentient being and I'm just not going to eat them um, and I don't want what's in our waters right now and based on what they've done to our oceans so what do I do I have a jar for example I'm going to walk away for just a second just it was some it was probably my red bell pepper uh, jar that I get from the store, the roasted red bell pepper. I used that for my hummus and ooh, what a hummus. And fill it up. Now this one, because the flax seed, and this is why I don't buy it ground, and that I only leave a little bit out in the refrigerator and immediately put everything else in the freezer and then scoop it up and I'll use this that I'm putting in the freezer within a couple of months. Um, the flax seed, and you can see, I hope you can see, see how finely ground that is? And it has a nice mild um, flavor, this or smell. This is the one that I keep in the refrigerator. I'm just using a new jar to show you. And I have a spoon, this is one tablespoon. And if it's full, for example, if the jar's full, I just put stem down, or you can just find some one tablespoon measure and I use two of these in my oat groats every morning. My husband has his with his oatmeal every morning. And I'll sprinkle it on a number of things. I make muffins with that. The thing is that if it's heated, you're losing a lot of your omega-3 um, fatty acids because they are heat unstable. Uh, and that's why if you're using it for oatmeal, if you're using it for a cereal, you'll want to um, put it in after you've cooked it. And you'll find that when you put it in, it thickens the mixture, which is really nice. It can give your oatmeal a very nice texture. So what am I gonna do with this? I have freezer bags and I label the freezer bags. Um, I used to note the ratio because there was a time I even added um, hemp seed to it, but uh, the hemp seed is heavier in omega-6s than 3s, and I use less hemp, and rather than mixing it in, I will just sprinkle it on, let's say my berries or something, because hemp has almost a nutty flavor. I don't want a lot of it, but I like some, and it's really high protein, and so is flax, and so is chia. They are both a protein-based, um, seed. So I'm going to finish doing this off camera, but I want to tell you something else. I'm going to include a link in this uh, video of something that I found. And to me, this is a treasure. It's the only place that I have found this. It was a Wikipedia article. I don't even know how long ago they made this, um, but it has a chart that includes foods that are high in our 
omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids and gives it and it gives us the ratios. The value of that is if I see something that is extremely high in omega-6s and I'm trying to see this, okay, there's two ways to improve your omega, maybe there's three. There's two ways to improve your omega-6 fatty acids or omega-3, and that is to eat a lot more omega-3. Well, I don't know how much flax and chia I can eat, or I can gobble down a salmon, but I don't wanna do that, I'm not going to do that. Or I'm gonna get it in greens and other vegetables, and I'll tell you about that. Or the other thing I can do is make sure I'm not overburdening that whole ratio process with sixes, i.e. no vegetable oils. Um, and the things that are really high in omega-6s, I'm going to avoid. And the chart shows me what's high in omega-6s over omega-1s. And so I don't go out of my way to have a lot of that. Um, almonds, dry roasted almonds are really high in sixes. And so I used to eat lots of almonds. Now I'm eating fewer almonds and I'm going for the walnuts because the walnuts are the only nut well, one of the few nuts that have very little sixes to ones, but they still are to threes rather, but they still are heavier on the, the six than the three, but it's our best nut to get the omega three from. Well, what else do I have here? And, and why am I showing you this? You're gonna find this chart handy. I found it handy, but I also found it quite eye-opening. One of the things I didn't realize is that a lot of our vegetables, a lot of greens, for example, uh, red leaf lettuce, Brussels sprouts, the cruciferous vegetables, um, uh, uh, turnips, raw turnips are loaded. Well, if not loaded, like, you know, three, four, five grams or micrograms, they're pretty heavily weighted in omega threes. So omega three fatty acids we'll find in our greens and all whole food plant-based people should be eating massive amounts of greens. Well, there was something there I hear that I didn't know. And when they were talking about beans and grains, there's a bean called malpe, um, uh, a malpe, but it's, it's M-A-L-P-E. But what I came to see, because if you open this link on your computer, you can, you can put your cursor on it and it'll describe what it is. The genus species is Vigna mungo. Um, and I put my cursor on it and it came up with all of these names that this is known under. It's an Eastern Asian bean, meaning Indian. And one of the common names for it is Irad or Yorad, U-R-A-D, dull. Dull is a, like a lentil. It's a, it's a bean in other words. So I went straight out to the Indian store to see if I could find this because I haven't seen anything other than a fish that is this high in on omega-3 and that then this bean. It's a one to 14 ratio, one six to 14 threes. So I went to the Indian store, I found them and the when I put my cursor over the genus and species, it explained the names, various names of these. So when I went to the Indian store, I showed them and he said, oh yes, Eridal. So we went back to the back and it explained that there was also a, a um, split, just like split peas, split yellow peas, split green peas. Well, they had the split um, Eridal, which means black doll, which means black like a lentil. And so I bought a package of each. Well, I don't have to show you this way because I did this. So what this doll is, is black on the outside with a white creamy center, what this bean is. And when it's split, this is what you get. You've got the black outside. So each one of these is dark on one side and light on the other. And I pulled out my vegan Indian recipe book and sure enough, there was a recipe for it. And then I Googled best Urad doll recipe 
and I came up with a number of them. So watch for a video about that because I'm gonna play with this. If I can get the amount of omega-3s quickly and easily by having a cup of what amounts to something like a lentil soup, because the doll is very similar to a lentil, well, I'm going to have that on a regular basis in my diet. And then I thought, I wonder if it's a typo. So I Googled amount of omega-3s in Urid doll, and I looked through these different um, things that came up. And in 2015, a husband and wife team wrote about this bean and, and um, went on and on about its um, high omega-3 uh, fatty acid profile. And I thought that was, that we, and, and agreed that it's 14 to one, or you can say one to 14 if it's three, I'm sorry, if it's six to three, or uh, um, one to 14 if it's six to three. Well, I, anyway, I, I, I'm confusing you, I'm sorry. But um, in any case, one six to 14 omega-3s. That is a omega-3 source. Now, I also read more about it and it said you have to be careful because it can be hard on the digestion because its, it's skin is rather thick and that's why it needs to be um, soaked quite a while, which I'll do. Um, so if you're not used to eating beans, if you're not whole food plant-based, I, I have a cast iron gut and all these feeds feed things feed your microbiome and diversity is the best thing for the microbiome and the microbiome is the best thing for our health to be stellar. Um, you may want to do little bits of something like this and yes you can get it on Amazon and yes you can get it organic on Amazon in small amounts. So that's all I have to say. If you're grinding your flax, preferably buy it the way I do and grind it yourself. It's handy to have it already ground with the chia and the flax because they're both the two highest in omega-3s and why not use both? Um, and it's just a nice little package and I'll label it and put that in the freezer and I date it, but this will be gone within, oh gosh, probably a month or two. Um, and that's all I want to say and look for that link and you can pull up this chart and to me the chart is a treasure. I haven't seen anything um, that has been this helpful in highlighting the amounts of omega-3 and omega-6 in food. Again, sixes are easy, no problem. Threes, you got to work a, a bit to get that ratio up. Have a great day. Oh, did I answer that when I said there's three ways to do it? One way is to eat a lot of omega-3s and try to catch up with your sixes. That doesn't work. The sixes are always going to outweigh it. The other is to reduce the six and then increase your threes. And that's what I do. And the other is to reduce the six and just let the threes be what they will be. Um, but um, I like the idea of having a good, strong omega-3 ratio. That's all I have to say. If I didn't introduce myself the way I normally do, I'll do it now. I wrote Aging Powerfully because my point all around food and all around lifestyle as medicine is that at any age, you can be more powerful than you were the decade before by eating more plants, taking better care of yourself by moving more, getting enough sleep, making sure you've got a lot of positive people in your life that is community, that sleep, de-stress, sit and meditate, take time to quiet your brain, and then eat the food that loves you back, and that's whole foods that are plant-based. <laughs> I'm done. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>